Hello everyone, I am super excited because I have a great project for you guys today. Welcome to Gazelle Creative Studio, my name is Uriel. Please subscribe to this channel because I will be bringing great projects, creativity and inspiration. Okay, let's get started with this exciting project. So you're gonna need uh, four of those glass uh, cutting boards and four picture frames. Uh, those picture frames are very specific and they fit our cutting boards for the most part. Also, you're gonna need uh, three of those uh, wooden squares and one uh, ceramic vase. Additionally, we're gonna need uh, some of those uh, whiteboards. I got those from Target, but after I, I was done with my project, I was able to find this one at Dollar Tree that's gonna work as well. We're gonna be uh, using some of those uh, square dowels, uh, high gloss Mod Podge, and some resin coloring ink as you can see here. This coloring ink uh, came from Hobby Lobby. First, I would like to show you how those frames fit our glass cutting boards. Um, they don't fit 100%, so we will have to resize uh, those uh, picture frames. But I want to show you really quick how much we need to cut off uh, so we can resize them to the right fit. First, what I want to do with those glass uh, cutting boards is to remove those uh, silicone legs. So I'm gonna do this for all four uh, glass cutting boards and then I'm gonna wash them just to get them ready for painting. While I'm letting uh, those uh, glass cutting boards dry, I'm gonna move on to uh, creating a very simple design for my stained glass. And basically I want a balance of uh, clear glass and some color because I want light uh, to go through just in, in different forms. Um, again, I'm just drawing some lines here and then in the center I am going to create some version of a flower. Here is my final design and next I'm gonna be using a Sharpie to bring those lines to the surface as I'm gonna be uh, putting it under the glass and I want to be able to uh, see those lines a little more clear. And I'm gonna be uh, doing this uh, for all the lines on my design. There are different methods to do the tracing. So I'm just showing you what I did, but if you decide to recreate this piece, you can uh, decide uh, later what method you would like to do for tracing. This is how my design looks under the glass. Before moving on, I would like to show you my frames. I was able to resize my frames and now those uh, glass cutting boards fit perfectly every frame. Um, I was able to remove uh, the staple and to put uh, one of the sides back, I just glued them with E6000 glue. Next, I'm gonna be cutting those uh, square dowels to size. And here are the four dowels cut to size, sand, and ready to glue. For this, uh, we're gonna be using glue E6000 because we are, we are dealing with two different kinds of materials. I am not sure what kind of material those frames are made of, but we're dealing with that kind of material with solid wood. I am going to put this piece aside and I am going to let it dry. Next, I'm gonna work on my stained glass pieces. For this, I'm gonna be using dimensional paint by Tulip and basically I am going to trace all those lines uh, made with a Sharpie. So I'm gonna do this for all four glass cutting boards. You can also use a dimensional paint from Dollar Tree but I didn't have a blank paint on hand. So that's why I am using this uh, Tulip brand paint. The Dollar Tree brand one is going to work as good as the Tulip one that I'm using here. Uh, again, uh, this uh, dimensional paint is not permanent, but it works uh, really, really good. It really sticks to the glass.
and here is a glass cutting board done and traced with a dimensional paint. This is coming along nicely. Also, I would like to show you how you can uh, come up with different designs. I got this uh, wooden cutout from Timu, and basically you can just put it uh, under and just trace it with dimensional paint. You can also use fabric and other designs and just trace it, as you can see here. Now that my stained glass has dried after 24 hours, I'm going to be uh, formulating uh, the coloring. For this, I'm going to be using the high gloss uh, mud patch and I'm going to be adding uh, one or two uh, resin ink. Something that you want to do once you apply a little bit of coloring on your stained glass is to lift the actual uh, stained glass and put it against light uh, to see if uh, there is enough coloring to your desire. Um, and again, uh, just add one drop at a time. You don't want it to look too dark. There are several uh, techniques out there to come up with faux uh, stained glass. So do some research and see what works for you and see what you have on hand for this uh, process. As you can see, I am adding more coloring because it is not dark enough uh, after I put the glass against light. Once you have the desired transparency for your color, go ahead and apply the color to all four stained glasses. And don't create a lot of coloring because you don't need a lot. Friends, I would like to connect with you, so please follow me on my social media channels. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I want to continue bringing uh, great projects and inspiration. Also, I would like to thank all my subscribers for all their support and kind words. Something that you want to keep in mind when you are coloring your stained glass to give it more texture and also uh, make it look like real uh, stained glass is the fact that it is okay to have sections where uh, some areas are a little darker than other ones. Also for the green, I started uh, with a few drops and I was uh, adding more drops as I was uh, moving down on my design. Now that my stained glass is all colored, I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours to dry. Next, I am going back to uh, continue building the structure of my uh, Tiffany style lamp. For this, again, I'm gonna be using uh, Glue E6000. And after 24 hours, uh, this structure of the lamp is nice and dry. Now I have placed uh, the whiteboard and this is going to become the lid for my lantern. So I'm just placing this structure to see uh, how I am going to create and align the lid. So right now everything is face down and I'm gonna be using some of those uh, wooden tumbling blocks uh, because I want uh, to be able to close uh, the lantern and I want everything to stay aligned as I close it. As you can see, I'm going to be using some tacky glue and I removed the structure because I know now where to place uh, those uh, wooden blocks. Next, I'm going to be using another uh, whiteboard and this is going to be the base of the structure. So I'm going to be placing this structure on the whiteboard just to align it and figure out how I am going to glue this. Uh, for this, I'm going to be using, uh, once again, uh, Glue E6000. What inspired me to create uh, this uh, Tiffany uh, style lamp uh, where those uh, glass cutting boards because of the texture. That texture I have seen it on stained glass and I thought it was going to be perfect to uh, recreate uh, th that uh, stained glass look and then uh, 
once I had that in mind, everything else uh, just uh, came naturally and came together. So enjoy. Friends, uh, this Tiffany style lamp turned out so beautiful. So I hope uh, you get uh, inspired and recreate uh, this lamp. And also, I am afraid that people are going to rush to the Dollar Tree and buy those uh, uh, glass cutting boards. And I will be sad for the people that are not going to be, uh, be able to cut their tomatoes and their onions and everything else that they usually cut. And this is how my main components for the lamp look like. They are nice and dried and now I'm going to move on to uh, create the base of the entire lantern. For this I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue and I made some markings so I can place uh, this uh, wooden square right in the center as you can see here. Next, I will be creating the base of the Tiffany style lamp. For this, I'm gonna be uh, gluing the ceramic base to another uh, wooden square. For this, I'm gonna be using Gorilla Epoxy Glue because uh, we're de dealing with ceramics and wood. Another great tip is to sand uh, your ceramic base because it has that shiny glaze and when you sand it uh, the paint stays a little better As you can see this piece is getting bigger and bigger. What I'm going to do next is uh, glue this structure to the base of my lamp. Now I am going to move on to work on the lid of the lamp. So I'm going to be uh, placing or gluing the last uh, wooden square on top of the lid as you can see there. Now that the lid is nice and dried, I'm going to be attaching this knob that I got from the Dollar Tree store. I cut off the tip and now I'm going to be drilling just a little bit to place the knob. Then I'm going to remove it so I can paint uh, the lid. And this is how this lamp is coming along and this is what we have so far. Uh, next I'm going to be uh, painting the entire lamp uh, using uh, Waverly paint uh, and this is the ink color.
and here is the lamp all nice and dry uh, next I'm gonna be using some gold paint I got from Walmart and the idea behind this is uh, uh, stained glass is usually associated with metal so we want that look as well that's the reason why I decided to paint it black and use some gold to give it that uh, metal look We're almost done with this uh, lamp. I had also applied a coat of Mod Podge to the entire lamp. And finally, I am attaching the knob to the lid and we're ready to go with this lamp. And here is the final reveal. And here is the final piece. This uh, Tiffany style lamp turned out so beautiful. And it is ready to make a statement in any room. This faux stained glass, it looks just like the real thing. It's so beautiful. What do you guys think of this piece? Please let me know in the comments below. To attach the stained glass to the lamp, I use a glue E6000 and this lamp stands at uh, 18 inches tall. You can use this lamp in different ways, but I would like to show you what I came up with. So we're going to be using one of those lights from Dollar Tree Plus section and also a candle to create a cool effect. So I'm going to be placing this at the bottom and then I'm going to be placing the, the candle on top of that, but I'm going to turn it on first and then I'm going to be putting the lid uh, to close it. Um, so once I have this ready, I'm going to use my remote control to turn it on. So right now you're going to see the little flame of the candle right there. And uh, with my remote control, I'm going to turn it on. And as you can see, the bottom light lights the candle as well. And uh, of course, it has uh, different colors. You can have it all white all the time, but I just love this concept look at this beautiful lamp and this is with a light off of course it looks better in person Take a look at the texture glass, it just looks like the real thing without the cost. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please follow me on my social media channels and don't forget to subscribe. Please uh, give me the thumbs up on this video.